Hello and welcome to worship with Middle Creek Church. God calls us from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west to worship him. So let us worship God together. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to sing an African-American spiritual called I'm going to live so God can use me. We're just going to do the first verse. Theoretically, we could do more because there's a lot of repetition in this one. But we're going to do the first verse and it's for something new. We're going to be using this as our response uh, throughout the fall season um, until we get to the Christmas, Christmas season. And so... Um, You'll be able to, you'll definitely know this by the time we end. So um, the only words that you don't really know in this one, uh, for gonna, we're going to say will. That's will. And then uh, anywhere is anywhere. And then anytime is any time. Not too hard. So let's sing it together. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Pretty easy, huh? Forgot about use, but I think you probably could copy that with me. So we are to be used by God for whatever purposes God has for us, but sometimes we put blocks in our way and say that we can't do that. Or we put blocks in our way because of the sin that we harbor in our hearts, thinking that God won't forgive us. God forgives you. Jesus forgives you. And so because of that, we can come to God with our confessions, knowing that we've been forgiven. And so we're going to pray our prayer of confession. This is just a prompt for us to remember the things in our own lives uh, that we might be doing or not doing, as the case may be, uh, that might be sinful and asking God to forgive us. So let us pray together. Good morning, God. You are so good to us, and we should be thankful. But our eyes don't see. Our mouths don't speak. Our ears don't hear. Our hearts don't love. Our hands don't share. Our knees don't kneel. Our feet don't move when we meet those in need. Forgive us. Help our feet to move our knees to kneel, our hands to share, our hearts to love, our ears to hear, and our mouths to speak out. Let our eyes see you when we look at others. Amen. I want to let you know that Jesus forgives you. Jesus forgives you. If you have others in the room with you, please tell them that now. I want to ask you to forgive me if I went too fast in that prayer. Hopefully, 
you have been repeating these prayers over and over again with me and are able to do them. I have to admit, I actually almost got ahead of myself and forgot one of the moves there for a second. That's when you hear me pause extra long. It's because my brain is saying, wait a minute, what is that one? I thank heavens we are all forgiven. God speaks to us and beckons for us to listen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear God's word by praying together from Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are continuing our story telling of the life of Moses and the people of Israel. And so uh, last week we learned about uh, Moses' birth and, um, and of course the beginning of the story. And now we are moving into chapter 3 of Exodus, verses 1 through 15, that talk about Moses' calling. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then God said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, God said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So Moses was just minding his own business. He was watching his uncle's sheep. If you remember the story in between the birth story and this one, 
uh, Moses had killed an Egyptian, and so he was fleeing for his life. He went to work for his, his uh, uncle and was watching the sheep on the hillside. And he went way out past the wilderness. It's significant because that's the same wilderness that the people of Israel wandered through. He went past the wilderness to the mountain, Mount Horeb. That's one of the names that we think might possibly be the mountain where he receives the Ten Commandments. Anyway, all of a sudden, as he's walking along, minding his own business, he sees this bush. And I'm sure he stopped and did like a looky-loo type thing because the bush was burning. And it was burning, but it wasn't burning up. It just kept burning. And then to top it off, a voice comes out of the bush and it's God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he says, I've seen the misery of my people. I've heard their cry and I've come down to deliver them. And so Moses says, that's awesome, God. That's awesome. But then God says, actually, we don't have that part in there, but I bet you that's what he says. And then God says to him, and I'm going to send you to free them. And so Moses says, what? You want me to do what? It can't mean me. And so Moses, in his way of uh, trying to figure out what's going on, he asks God, for God's name, you know, what do I tell them when I tell them that this God of their ancestors has sent me to them? Um, now, one of the things we need to remember, because he said, you know, they'll ask me for your name. Uh, the gods of Egypt all had names. They had been given names by the people. And as a matter of fact, all the pagan gods uh, had names. Uh, these were names that were given to them by their worshipers. And, and um, and so now we have this God, and this God doesn't have an image, doesn't have a statue that people have made, and didn't have a name. And so Moses asked what in his mind would have been that obvious question. And so God gives Moses God's name. And he says, I am who I am. Now that's the word that we read in Hebrew as Yahweh, or you might use the word Jehovah. It's the same name. Now, the actual meaning of that word is more complete than simply I am. It means I am, and I was, and I will be. It means all of those things in and of itself. It contains all of that. Not just I'm here now, but I was before and I will be in the future. God's name signifies that God is not simply a statue we make for a particular period in time that can be destroyed at any time, that can be misused and abused at any time. Yahweh is. Yahweh has been since before the beginning of the universe, and Yahweh will be at the end of time and beyond. God says, tell them Yahweh. We use the word Lord in that place, and when you see Lord all capitalized, it's the word Yahweh. So tell them Yahweh, I am who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, sent me to you. And then God says that he will give them a sign to prove that he is who he says he is, freedom from Egypt. And so what he says is, after it's all over, you will worship me. You know that saying, the proof of the pudding is in the eating? Well, that's basically what God is saying here. The proof that God is who he says he is, is when God does what he says he will do and frees the people of Israel from Egyptian captivity. 
Now, we know, if you continued reading in Exodus 3, that there was this major league discussion that happened after that. And uh, Moses doubts that he will be able to do uh, to do what God asks him on his own. God actually tells him. He doesn't ask him. Uh, God tells him to do it, and he doubts that he can do it all alone. And, and so God um, gives him uh, reasons why he'll be able to do that and, and ways to do it. And so God wins the argument. He takes all of Moses' excuses away. And so Moses goes to Pharaoh, and the rest is history, and we'll be talking about that in the weeks to come. This story reminds us that there are many people in crisis throughout the world, throughout our country, on the streets of our towns, in the cubicle next to you at work, in the line at the grocery store, where anywhere you might go, there are people in distress, people in crisis, and they are crying out to God to help them. And God has seen their misery, God has heard their cry, and God has come down to deliver them. And God is sending you to do it. Amen. And amen. We affirm what we believe every single week by uh, reciting this creed that I have written uh, in order to help us be able to sign it together. So let us remember that God claims us. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Three in one. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the church, the body of Christ. We bring our prayers to God, knowing that God is with us, that God loves us, that God cares for all of those who are hurting. What did God say? I have heard their cries, I have seen their misery, and I have come to help them. He may be sending us into their lives, but however God chooses, God will be with them. So I'm going to prompt you to lift up those folks that you are concerned about um, today and pray for them. And then after that, we will sign the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that you have heard us in our distress, that you hear our cries, and that you have come to help us. And Lord, we pray that you will be with all those that rest in our hearts today. We pray for those who are sick and for those receiving treatment and therapy. We pray for those awaiting tests and surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. We pray for those struggling with mental illness and addiction. We pray for those who are so overwhelmed by life that they consider suicide. Lord, we pray for caregivers. And we pray for those who mourn. Lord, we pray for the poor and the oppressed, for those who are struggling to find work or a place to live, 
or food to eat. We pray for those who find themselves living in violent places, especially when that violent place is their own home. We pray for those dealing with human made and natural disasters. We especially pray for those who put their lives on the line to help us when we are in need and to fight for the causes of justice. We pray for our leaders here and around the world. And we pray for your church that we might truly be sent by you into this world in your name. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We just want to remind you to continue to support any causes that you might have. If one of the causes that you want to support is Middle Creek Church, uh, please send any donations you might have via mail. We do have an online giving. If you go to our Middle Creek Church website, uh, you'll, there is a button there so that you can set up online giving for that. We are in the midst of doing our virtual crop walk uh, and getting uh, sponsors for that. And so if you are interested in that, please contact the church and we will give you the information that you need in order to find out about how to participate in a virtual crop walk or the names of people who are walking uh, that you might be able to support. We also uh, just want to let you know that um, we are not offering Christian education uh, right now. If you happen to be interested in maybe doing some Zoom classes, please contact the church and we might be able to arrange something for that. <clears throat> we will be beginning uh, in sanctuary worship on August the 4th. That's a communion Sunday and so you will need to bring your own elements. But we will be continuing this online worship uh, even though we will have in-person worship in the sanctuary uh, for those who are uncomfortable worshiping inside. Please know that we have taken every precaution that we can think possible. We have created a system for ventilation that we hope will exchange the air quickly enough uh, to keep people safe and healthy. Of course, we will insist on masks and social distancing. There will be a spot set, up, set aside for people to sit in and then other places that will be uh, masked off with um, painter's tape. Uh, that you should avoid. Uh, we will be not offering communion, but everybody will bring their own. We will not be passing the offering plate, but we'll have the plates in the back of the church for you to put uh, plates there. Uh, we are trying in every way. We also will have sanitizing uh, uh, Clorox wipes for you to wipe down the spot that you are in or in the bathrooms so that you can clean up areas as you um, use them so that the next person might uh, know that that place is sanitary 
and safe for them. But please, um, if you are interested in an in-person, in-sanctuary worship, we are going to offer that. Unless, of course, for some reason, um, we have moved back to stage three and are no longer allowed to do that. But we will continue to offer this online worship experience for everybody. Now, let us bless one another. May God watch over you always. May Jesus walk with you always. May the Spirit live in you always. Amen. And as we sang at the beginning of worship, we are going to sing the same song now at the end of worship. I'm going to live so God can use me. Anywhere, Lord, any time, I'm going to live so God can use me. Anywhere, Lord, any time, God bless you, and we'll see you again next week for worship.